I'm going to welcome our first presenter, Allison Smith from the University of Maryland. And <coughs> she can put it. All right. Okay, so hi. Um, I'm Allison Smith. I'm a PhD. PhD student at University of Maryland. I'm going to talk about some of the work that I've been doing on making topic models more accessible to end users. Um, this is work that I've done with, oh, is it resolution? That's done. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to cut off part of the screen. Okay, well, if that's, it's a little cut off on the left, if that becomes a problem, we'll get to it. Okay, so this is work I've done with other colleagues from University of Maryland, uh, UC Boulder, and BYU. Um, I'm going to really breeze through this discussion, so if there's anything of interest to you, hopefully we can talk about it during the panel discussion or during any of the breaks. I'm happy to talk about this work. Okay, so this research goal really stems from this idea of too much data, um, particularly, I mean, text data for what we're doing. So here, just to get an idea, not that I think anyone doesn't believe this, but from, here's a 2014 infographic on the data that's produced every minute on popular social media applications. And each minute, we pr produced over 250,000 tweets, uh, 25,000 uh, Yelp reviews, 204 million emails are sent, and 2.5 million things are shared on Facebook. And that's each minute, and that's in 2014. So just imagine what it is today. Um, a lot of this data can contain potentially uh, useful information that can be used in a variety of applications, such as predictive marketing, um, security threat monitoring by the NSA or FBI, uh, financial trading, like stock market trading even. Um, a particular example of predictive marketing is when uh, companies use your purchase information to send uh, targeted ads at you. So for example, Target is notorious for this practice because they were using a, um, receipts and buying information to figure out whether uh, people, women were pregnant and then they would send them vapor related ads and then this became a whole big deal because they sent these vapor related ads to a teenager and her dad saw them and uh, that was a big problem. So uh, it's very successful algorithm in that they were able to predict that, but it's not so successful on the marketing side. Okay, so how can we make sense of all this data? No one at Target is sitting down and reading through all these receipts and saying, oh, you know, I think this person is pregnant. So there's a lot of all automatic algorithms that we can use for uh, mining big data. This includes classification algorithms, uh, clustering, reinforcement learning, regression. Um, I'm particularly going to focus on clustering. Uh, topic modeling is an example of document clustering. So how topic modeling works is you take input a collection of documents and it discovers automatically the themes or topics of discussion from those documents. And these are represented here as these ordered lists of words. So for example, um, documents that are more about uh, the iPhone will use words like Apple, smartphone, device in addition to iPhone. Uh, documents that are about baseball will use words like baseball, home run, coach, inning uh, in their documents. So we can discover these topics um, from this document corpus. Also, documents are not just about one topic. They're usually a mixture of topics, so you'll get primarily a document here showing is about um, iPhone, but al also about the fact that it was unveiled and then the location that it was unveiled. So you get this mixture of uh, topic. So topic modeling encodes that intuition by coming up with the modeling documents as mixtures of topics and topics are uh, mixtures of words. Okay, so how's this really done? I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. Honestly, the point of showing the slides is to show you, oh, this is too complex for most users to understand in a 15 minute talk, but um, the words, those are the only observed um, variable in the algorithm. Everything else is hidden and it's inferred during the modeling process. Uh, algorithm experts, however, they can go through and tune some of these things, like this alpha parameter or the number of topics K. They can take specific words from uh, the vocabulary and add them to a stop words list because they're uh, useless words like the, of, or is. Um, and there's also pre-processing that can be done. And it might take multiple iterations of this tuning and pre-processing to come up with this final good topic model. But what about our non-expert users? We can't really expect them to understand this plate diagram or uh, what a stop words list is and be able to modify things that way, right? So, however, these end users do have domain knowledge that we might, we might want to incorporate, like the locations or the sports um, domain knowledge, and we want them to be able to input that into the modeling algorithm. 
So our big goal is how can we make topic models more accessible to non-expert end users? Okay, so the answer, we hope, is interactive topic modeling. So we want the user to be able to input their knowledge into the modeling algorithm as the modeling is occurring. So for example, with this location topic, a user might see that and see the words San and Francisco and want to merge that into San Francisco. Um, in this baseball topic, the user might want to add additional words like out or inning. A lot of work has been done in this area of interactive topic modeling. It's all relied on this overarching idea that direct manipulation of the algorithm is um, more approachable than parameter tuning. But a big problem is that most of the prior work has focused on the constraints of the algorithm and algorithm inputs instead of actually focusing on the needs of the end user. So this is where our work comes in. Um, a lot of our current work has been thinking about once you step back and actually think about how an end user wants to approach topic models, there's a lot of challenges that come out of it. So the first is that you really have to reassess what the users want to do without biasing by what the algorithm can do. Um, we need to take into account the fact that algorithms, specifically interactive talk modeling, can be slow, and how can we handle that? Um, unpredictable as well, that can be a big problem. And we also want to make sure we're actively supporting the user throughout this whole process. Okay, so I'm going to spend the most time talking about how we step back and reassess user expectations. Um, a lot of our current work, is, or a lot of our um, most recent work is there, and then I'll quickly go through the other challenges with the uh, work that we're doing there and then some future ideas. So when it comes to um, inter designing interactive topic modeling, original algorithm designers, they is assumed what the users wanted to do based on their own working with it, things like being able to add words to a stop words list that made sense to them. Uh, the very first um, ITM implementation actually encoded these refinements as um, pairwise constraints between words, so saying that these two words must link together and be in a topic together or must not. That doesn't really make sense to our end user's view of the world. They've only seen these lists of groups of words, so it doesn't make sense to them to say these two must link or cannot link. So a big solution is that we need to step back and do more user studies yay, um, with non-expert users. So that's what we did. Um, we first did an open-ended interview study. We didn't want to bias our users by what the algorithm could already do. So we sat down with uh, 20 topics generated from news articles. We showed them each topic one by one, just the topic words, asked them what they thought the topic meant, um, what they thought of the quality. Then we showed them the documents, asked them to explain further, now what do you think it meant, um, and give suggestions for how they wanted to refine. So originally, we found some big problems just with topic understanding in general. We found that the topics were hard to understand just based on the words alone. We had one user say uh, they didn't really understand some of the themes before they saw the articles. We noted a lot of these aha moments where we showed them the words, asked them what they thought the topic meant, then we showed them the articles, and then, oh, now I see, this is what it was about. Uh, this is important because a lot of topic visualizations only show the words, um, and then you have to drill in to see the documents. So we found that it's important to kind of let the user see both. Okay, additionally, and unsurprisingly, but confirmed, incoherent or more random topics are confusing to users. This is not surprising, but we noted particular frustration with these seemingly random topics where people were saying, oh, these terms are just a mess, they're all over the place, or um, this topic is so random, and it completely frustrated the user to see a topic like that in the model. Okay, so then we wanted to see what refinements the users would suggest without biasing them by what was possible. So here are some example topics that we showed them. Uh, for the first one, we saw the user wanted to remove the uh, first word Mr. and Miss because they're common words um, that didn't really help them understand the theme. For the second one, a user said, oh, I really want to emphasize this word research uh, in this topic. And then in the third one, the user said, I want to intensify the idea of this discussion of competition by adding these words. So then they um, gave some specific ones to add. So from these 10 interview participants, we went through all of their refinements and coded them uh, into 11 different refinements. For example, these ones were remove words, change word order, and add words. We coded all of, um, of the ones that came through in 11 and figured out the frequency of these refinements. From here, we took the top six except we also combined merge words and connect phrases because they were kind of captured similar ideas. Um, and we took that top six to then study in more detail in a crowdsource study. Okay, so our crowdsource study had 90 participants. We really wanted to see, now that we had our set of refinements that we knew our interview study participants wanted to be able to do, how often 
would these refinements be used um, in a crowdsource study? So we showed them this little interface where they saw the same topics as before, but now we provided those refinements and asked them to use these refinements against the topics. This gave us a ranked set of, of refinements from four. So we have add word, remove word, merge words, which is the third most popular, change word order, remove documents, and split topic. So what's especially exciting about this is that none of the prior ITM work, um, no single tool allowed all of these refinements in the same interface, and none of the tools really specified this merge word or make words into a phrase refinement. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly go through the rest of our challenges. Um, a big one is that in interface design, of course, we want to provide immediate feedback, right? We don't want the user getting confused by what they were doing or losing their motivation. But unfortunately, updating a topic model can be really slow from 5 to 50 seconds um, in our research. So uh, there's two, two ways that we can handle this, uh, coming up with more efficient algorithms, of course, uh, and then also making sure that we're providing this intermediate feedback in the interface. So our current uh, very prototype interface, we're um, testing out intermediate feedback, so by striking through these removed documents and removed words, underlining ad words, just to give a user an idea of, you know, so they don't forget what they did um, after each refinement before we can actually go through and complete the model and process. Another thing, though, is that algorithm, especially um, interactive talk modeling, is really unpredictable. So a user might specify these refinements like, they, like I showed before, where they merged San Francisco into San Francisco, they added in an inning and out, but then the modeling runs, and look, you have this completely, not exactly what they were expecting, right? So California got pulled in because now San Francisco is going to be more related with California and moved out Cincinnati. Um, we got some additional baseball words, strike here, home, came in and coach left. And that's normal for part of the, it's part of the modeling process, but a user's not gonna understand that. They specified these explicit things they wanted to happen, and now this is what they got. So our solution, again, uh, twofold. We wanna make sure we're minimizing this unpredictability in the algorithm, and we also wanna make sure we're communicating these changes in the user interface appropriately. So our current work, we're developing metrics to measure this unpredictability, um, and that way, when we are trying out different ITM algorithms, we'll be able to um, compete them against each other to make sure we're picking the most predictable and appropriate implementation. All right, finally, um, a lot of our future work is thinking about ways that we can actively support the user in the ITM process. So these include focusing the user, making sure we're giving appropriate suggestions, and then showing their progress with the system. So for focusing the user, we really want to make sure we're not wasting the user's time. So not every when we show a topic not topic model, not every topic do they need to spend as much time on as the others. We really think it's these medium quality, and by quality I mean topic coherence um, topics that they want to focus on because the ones that are really high quality to start with, they'll probably just end up making it worse. And the ones that are really low quality are probably just candidates for removal. We don't want to frustrate them with those random topics that they probably don't know what it means to begin with and aren't going to be able to affect it that much. We also, um, there are infinite refinement possibilities, so we want to make sure we're helping to suggest some refinements as the user is using the system. This could include merging words into discovered phrases, um, suggesting that we, uh, they add a hypernym to categorize all of the existing topic words, for example. And then also, just to keep our user motivated, we want to make sure we're giving them uh, feedback of how they're doing, so how much of the model they've affected so far, and then also how the quality has changed based on their refinements. All right, so just to recap, uh, this all really boils down to this idea of human-centered design where you have this, your backing algorithm, you have the inputs and the outputs that it expects, how long it takes to run, um, that sort of thing, and then you have your user and you have their application and how they see the, uh, the model and how they want to affect it. So you want to make sure that you're considering the fact that there's not always a one-to-one -one relationship here. Although there may be some edge cases where you can completely expose the algorithm and the user can it directly, there's going to be this sort of in-between abstraction layer that you need to account for. And that's okay. We just have to make sure that we're doing the due diligence to see what the user really wants to do and not just pushing them uh, in the way of the algorithm. For ITM, this really falls on making sure we know what the user really wants to do with the topic model. So if we have users saying they want to merge words into a phrase, then it's the job of the algorithm designer to figure out how to specify that as a refinement. Um, we want to make sure that we are providing this immediate feedback because users want quick and predictable algorithms. So we want to make sure that we're minimizing the unpredictability. And then we also want to think about ways that we can actively support the user in this process.